This is the first of a series of videos on COM, our component object model. And a huge amount of this series is going to be just informational because there's a tremendous amount of detail you have to understand in order to really understand COM. And basically what COM is is a method of sharing binary code across different applications and languages. In theory, you could share it across different operating systems. You could take the same COM server and run it on uh, Windows or Unix or whatever, but in fact, it almost always just runs on Windows. I've never seen a COM or an Olay or an ActiveX object. COM, Olay, and ActiveX are three words for exactly the same thing. Uh, run on anything else but Windows. So this also brings up another point that a big part of the confusion with COM is they use different words to mean the same thing. <laughs> like Olay was the old word which was object linking and embedding. Then they, it became COM which is component object module. And then in 1996 they switched over to ActiveX but they didn't really. You still see COM referenced as COM in a bunch of different places. For instance, when I drag an ActiveX object over to a C-sharp form, as I've done several times in previous videos, the tab I click on says COM, but the ActiveX object I drag over usually says something like VLC ActiveX plugin. So we have two different words used to describe exactly the same thing, ActiveX and COM. But the binary modules that are used to uh, contain the uh, shared binary objects are usually DLLs or EXEs. In fact, they're usually DLLs in my experience, which stands for Dynamic Link Library and these have to be compiled to match a specific structure in memory in order for this to work across applications and languages and they always have an interface which is a group of functions and the way I think of it an interface is like the prototype for functions it shows you the format you need to use to call the function but it doesn't contain the actual code of the function and the interface names always start with an I, for instance, I shell link. And there's what's called a uh, abstract base class with only pure virtual functions, which is a complicated way of saying exactly what I just said. They define the prototype for interacting with it, and they sort of define a standard that you have to meet when you, you create the function but they're not the function itself, they're just the interface to the function. The uh, actual function itself is what's called a co-class or a component object class and these are actually contained in the DLs or DLLs and the EXEs and they're the code that implements the prototypes that are described in the interfaces. So you have an interface and a co-class the two parts of a COM object. And the COM server is the actual implementation of the, uh, the co-class. It has, uh, it's a, contained in a DLL or an EXE and it contains one or more co-classes. And another big idea in COM is registration. And that you have to register the COM uh, server with the operating system so that anyone can access it. And when you register it, this creates a registry entry in what's called the registry in Windows. And as long as this is in the registry, anyone can locate the COM server. And in order to make the uh, interface uh, accessible by any, anyone, they use numbers rather than uh, names since names can vary with different languages and these numbers are called GUIDs or globally unique identifiers and they're a 128-bit number 
and I'll show you in the next video how you can generate a GUID and GUIDs are used both to identify the interface and to identify the code class. When they're used to identify the code class, they're called classes or CLSIDs. And when they're used to identify the interface, they're called IIDs or IIDs. And here, once again, it's some, a place where there's two different words that are used to describe exactly the same thing. GUIDs are often referred to as UIDs, UUIDs, which stands for Universally Unique Identifiers. And when you see those two terms, they're talking about exactly the same thing. This 128-bit number used to identify interfaces and co-classes. And what gets returned by a COM method is uh, called a H result. And there again, confusion is probably created if you're familiar with the idea of handles. Things that start with an H are often handles, like a window handle. But the H result isn't a handle, it's just a number that indicates error or success. The COM library is not to be confused with a COM server. The COM library is a part of the Windows operating system that lets you implement COM. In other words, you need the COM library to do things like create a COM object with a API or application programming interface called co-create interface or instance. And the co-create instance function is defined in the COM library but you define the COM server as a developer. So in creating COM objects, as I said, we use an API called CodeCreate Instance in the COM library. And it's similar to the new operator in C uh, Sharp or in, in C++ for that matter. And it's called to create the COM object and in order to delete the COM object, we don't have to call anything, really. We, we have to call a routine that lets the system know that we're using the COM object, since COM objects are often shared. Dynamic link libraries are shared by multiple applications. And in order to handle deletion with a shared system like that, each COM object contains a reference count. And when you start using the COM object, you call the uh, you call the COM object and let it know you're using it, which causes it to increment the reference count. And when you stop using the COM object, you call another routine to let it know you're done using it. So this decrements the reference count. And when the reference count reaches zero, and the COM object, the COM object gets removed from memory. So the format of the co-create instance uh, function is h result co-create instance ref classed uh, r classed uh, lp unknown p unknown outer uh, d word dw class context. Uh, ref IID R I I D and LP void star which means a pointer to a pointer of PPV and the meaning of these uh, different parameters is the R classed is the GUID naming the code class the P uh, unknown outer is generally set to null and it's used for aggregation. Aggregation is a way of adding new methods to the COM object, but very few people ever want to do that, so they just set the P uh, unknown outer to null to indicate they don't want to use aggregation. And the DW class of, uh, context is like an enum in that it just should allows you to specify different types of servers that you might want to use or ways of using a server and the one that is simplest and probably most often used is the CLS CTX in proc server 
which says we're going to use the uh, COM server as an in-process DLL. It gets loaded into the actual object code that we run, but loaded from the DLL. And the RIID uh, is the GUID naming the interface. And finally, the PPV is the address of the interface pointer <coughs> that gets returned when you call uh, the co-create instance. And in a way that's the object of the whole whole point of calling it, is that you get a pointer to a pointer to the interface, which then allows you to start actually calling the methods within the interface. So uh, an actual example of uh, a co-create instance being called is here. We have our H result, which is the successor error code, and we have a pointer to I shell link, which is an interface for the com object. And we have HR equals co-create instance with the predefined uh, GUID for the class ID a null indicating we're not using aggregation, a uh, CLS CTX in-proc server indicating the type of server we're using, which is a in-process DLL, and then the IID uh, shell link, which is the predefined uh, GUID for the IID, and then a pointer to a pointer that uh, returns the uh, pointer to the interface itself so that we can start calling functions within the interface. And of course these concepts are really C++ and the, that fact means that much of this is totally behind the scenes in a language like C Sharp. In C Sharp what you do to define a uh, an ActiveX object is you drag it from the toolbox over to the form and all this gets defined for you behind the scenes. But if you're actually going to write your own ActiveX object or your own COM object, you're definitely going to need to understand these kinds of details. And finally, we just have a if statement that says uh, if it succeeded, and the HR code indicates that, then we do the following calls to the pointer to the uh, interface, the I shell link interface. And if it didn't succeed, then we probably pop up some kind of message that says we failed to create the uh, ActiveX object to the COM object. Well, this is probably enough detail for one session. Uh, in the next uh, one or two videos, we're going to look at how you actually generate GUIs, these 128 allegedly totally unique in the world numbers. I guess in the, the case of the UID, it implies it's unique in the universe. But uh, as I say, we'll have to go into more detail after that, but at least we'll have a break looking at actual code for the next couple of videos and generating GUIDs. Well, I hope you uh, enjoyed this video and learned a lot, and I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe.